All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome. My name is Kenny Rhoda, and welcome to 2024 Start Tank. Uh, I am the Afternoon Drive co-host of the Kenny and JT Show on 1480 WHBC Radio. So if you're a sports fan or an entertainment uh, pop culture fan, you can tune us in and, and hear what we have to say. Uh, this is a little different for me. This is different from sports. As I was talking with some of the Sharks, and we'll introduce them here in a little bit. But uh, I love stepping outside my comfort zone, right, doing something different. And when uh, Jay called me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? I said, absolutely. I'm a big fan of the show, Shark Tank. So to be involved with this within the community, giving back and uh, wishing all of you the best of luck, I said, absolutely. Let, let's jump on board with this and have some fun with it. And for those of you out there in the audience, uh, Stark Tank is a business pitch competition series led by the Stark Education Partnership. Tonight's teams are made up of college students from Stark County area colleges and universities. Now this year, we had more college entries than ever before. Tonight, we will hear from the top nine college teams chosen by the Sharks based on their elevator business pitch submissions. Now, Shark Tank would not be possible without our amazing sharks. And these successful Stark County entrepreneurs and business leaders support and fund Stark Tank each and every year. We have a total of nine sharks that take turns judging these competitions at the high school and college finals. Stark Tank is a brainchild of several of our sharks. They are offering their time, resources, wisdom, and money to reinvest in the next generation of entrepreneurs. Tonight we have three of these amazing sharks with us. So uh, please help me welcome, first of all, Sue Grabowski, CEO of Desadara. Sue, nice yeah. round of applause for Sue. Mark Fedor, who is the CEO of Morgan Engineering. Mark. and Charles Mullen, the chairman of Apple Growth Partners. <laughs> Sharks, thanks for all that you do. Thanks for being here tonight and uh, uh, investing your time and other resources as well. Now, each team tonight will have four minutes to make their pitches. The Sharks then will have five minutes for questions to those teams. Teams, you will see a yellow sheet as being held up right there. It's kind of like the timeout guy in football, right? If, if you've ever gone to a football game, they hold the game up uh, until you see that uh, uh, red or yellow sheet go up and down. Well, the yellow sheet uh, will give you that first warning uh, when one minute left, and then a red sheet will be held up when your time is up. Sharks, you will see the same yellow and red sheets for the Q&A portion of the competition, so please be aware of those. After hearing all the pitches, our Sharks will head out to privately deliberate. During the deliberation, we're going to have some fun up here. I've got some sports and entertainment trivia questions, and we've got some uh, gift cards to give away to Starbucks. I know how, you know, for college students, uh, that's a big uh, uh, pick-me-up right there. So a uh, chance to win there. And we'll have some musical entertainment we'll tell you about a little bit later on. So for right now, though, we want to get started with Stark Tank 2024. All right, and so we're going to, we've numbered the teams one through nine, and so we're going to go in that order, and starting things off with our presentations tonight will be team one from Kent State University, Vinci, with Brad Smith making his presentation to our Sharks. Did you know that 88% of adults admitted they were unprepared to handle money? And it's not that they don't want to learn, but rather they did not have access to the materials that they needed. Issues like this tell the story of a nationwide problem of financial illiteracy that's being overlooked in our country today. 
For example, only 25 states require full access to financial education, despite 70% of adults admitting they live paycheck to paycheck. And on top of this, student disengagement has never been higher, with 75% of students admitting they are bored in school every single day. My name's Brad Smith, and this is why I founded Vinci Learning, a company that combats problems like this through gamified learning solutions. Our debut product, Ways to Wealth, oh, why is it? Oh, it's not showing. I don't know what's wrong with that. But our debut product, Ways to Wealth, is an interactive board game that teaches students the principles of saving, investing, and budgeting in a new and unique way. Players will receive an occupation where they will purchase real life assets such as homes and vehicles and then have the, to deal with the consequences of owning these assets in the form of house and car payments. And users will also be introduced to financial concepts such as side hustles, loans, investment opportunities, credit, taxes, and more. Again, I don't know why it's not showing up. It showed up when I submitted it, but... Just last month, I took an early demo of Ways to Wealth to a classroom full of students, and the results were overwhelming, with both parents and educators admitting they had never seen the students so engaged in an activity like this before, as they were able to craft their own financial identities. In terms of the financials, it cost us $8.84 to produce a single unit of Ways to Wealth, which we will sell for $20, giving us a 56% profit margin. Market off. Oh my goodness. So, there, fortunately for us, there's so much opportunity in this brand new market. In 2021, only six states offered full access to financial literacy education. Now, in 2024, 25 states now require all schools K through 12 to study uh, personal finance. And one of these states is none other than Ohio, who recently, in 2022, now mandates all high school students to pass a financial literacy test before they graduate high school. So what makes us different than competitors such as McGraw-Hill, Bonsai, and Rams Education? And the answer to this is that we combine both gamified learning solutions and curriculum learning solutions, where our competitors primarily just do one or the other, so they're often lacking in some dimension. So our future plan, it can be broken down into three phases. Firstly, we are going to protect our product through all the multiple legalities, as well as continue to market and sell inventory on hand. Then for phase two, we're going to create an additional gamified product that is also oriented around financial education to increase cash flows. And then lastly, by phase three, we're going to begin digitizing these physical products to enter the virtual realm in 2025. We expect that to cost around twenty dollars to $25,000, and that's what we will be utilizing the funding towards if we receive that today. In terms of our future projections, it costs us $7,000 in startup costs in 2024, and we expect to receive $10,000 in revenue just this year. As for 2025, we expect to double our revenue to $20,000 and incur a $25,000 digitization cost as we transition our physical tools into virtual ones. The team, I don't know why anything's not showing up, but it's currently just comprised of myself. I am a junior finance major at Kent State University with a minor in international business. And I've also been an entrepreneur since I was 18 years old. I started my first ever business called Finlet during my senior year of high school. It was also in the financial education space and we ultimately raised over $10,000 in revenue through that. And that experience itself gave me a established network that I'm able to utilize right now, as well as uh, experience how to navigate the education industry and create a product from scratch and sell it. Here is our social media. Uh, handles and it should be a QR code to take you to our website. Again, I don't know why nothing's showing up. Like last night, I literally, I talked to Jay multiple times. And I set the PowerPoint like three times because I didn't want this to happen and it is what it is. So thank you all. Thank you all for your attention and I appreciate all of you. So are you, you're selling these already? So I just received those uh, last week on Monday and I'm receiving 488 units. I bought 500 of them. I'm re receiving the 488 in about two weeks. Have you, have you did a patent search already? So I have a copyright on it. I haven't done an in-depth patent search, but I am aware of all those legalities and trademarks and whatnot, yes. So you're aware that once you start selling, you're not gonna be able to get that patent? Well, you gotta apply for the patent first. Hmm. It's a patent pending. So I haven't applied. So for a patent for a board game specifically, it would just be in regards to the instructions. 
I am more focused on like the trademarks and the copyright aspect with the design of the game and everything. But the only thing that could be patent would be the instructions. Okay. And you designed the, the game start to finish? Mm -hmm. Like you like how did you design did you design the Mm -hmm. The path that people take, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I designed every card, all the mathematics, all of those aspects were done by myself. I, I'm like a drawer, so I like hand drew everything out. Oh, yeah, I don't mean like graphic mm -hmm. design, but you oh. created... Yes, everything start to finish was created by myself, yes. So, so what made you... This is great problem to solve. Yes, yeah. thank you. This yeah. is, you're spot on with, with this. So uh, what made you choose to go this route with a physical game board? Not good at digitalization, by the way. That is an excellent question. So the reasoning is, I started this company, or I started a company called Finlay. It was very similar to this. We created a board game. It was called Budget Bus. This is a basically a revised, better iteration of it. And ultimately, we decided to go the physical route because capital. It, it costs more money to get the digital version, and it's also nice to have a physical version because then you can get that market validation. You can see if it really works, rather than spending all the capital and creating that product and not being too sure of what it looks like. So. So, so if I saw on the one the one slide, I think in the beginning, yeah, you're you're kind of pushing this towards K twelve, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, is this something that your 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 market is to try to get it into curriculum that schools would buy? Mm -hmm. Is that, is that so? What you're trying to do? I have a slide here, the images aren't showing up, but I just recently completed the Akron University's i market research program, so over the past seven weeks I've done tons and tons of interviews sort of getting a feel for the exact market fit, and it really, for the physical product, it, it, deter it depends on who we're targeting exactly, so the first primary consumer, the first person that we're buying it, we look at that as the involved parent, they're caregivers of children around 8 to 12, they're female, typically around the age of 30 to 40 years old, and then those are the various ways that we can reach them through Facebook, social media platforms, e-commerce, stuff like that. And then if we're orienting more towards the education aspect, because it's a physical tool, we would be partnering more with high school and middle school teachers, because they're more likely to play the game in the class. It's a lot more autonomous. They don't have to look over all the students in an elementary age range. And we look at it more of a supplementary tool for financial literacy curriculum, rather than being curriculum itself. And thankfully, because of that, we don't have to abide by I mean, we do about, we follow everything by the standards, but we don't have to like pass the Ohio Department of Education like a test, and we don't have to do any of that stuff, any of those regulations. I want to say a really good presentation. Thank I'm a you. Sucker for anybody that memorizes their speech and then can deliver it like they don't have it memorized. So that mm -hmm. was very good. Thank you. Thank and you. you have a way of smiling when you talk that's very difficult to do. So Thank good so presentation. Now. Yeah. Uh, I'm still a little uh, fuzzy, though. Is there a demand for this? So you mm -hmm. think you think this is something people want? Mm -hmm. you, there is a market for it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the nice words. And I also want to say it would have been much better if the things actually showed up like I planned for weeks. But so I did show a graph, and it mentioned the states that are now requiring personal finance. And a big part of that, that's not just like schools acknowledging it. It's pretty much everybody collectively acknowledging this is a huge problem. It, we need to find a solution for it. So people are voting for it, and bills are being passed, and all these resources are being created out of nothing. So it's not just like schools. It's pretty much everybody collectively agreeing upon this, although there's so much opportunity with schools. I mean, 21 states, or it was six states in 20, uh, 21 to 25 in just three years. Like, that is astounding. And I think it would be realistic to assume that all 50 states will be requiring personal finance in the next mm. few years. Um, just one piece of feedback. So we're a big board game family, mm -hmm. and we love playing Settlers of Catan, mm -hmm. and there's a, a version of it on Discord that uh, seems to be an elementary way of adapting a board game to digitization that mm -hmm. might be cheaper mm -hmm. than going full on, you know, separate app. So mm -hmm. just saying, look into that. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I went to a Rice University through thing through Kent State, and I met a company, they're called Boardable, and they did like something very similar. They have like an app, and then they're able to digitize the games and put them into it. That's sort of how I got like that quote, because I was asking yeah. them, like, how much would that be? So yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah, I like the, I like the name too. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. How about a nice round of applause for Brad Smith, Vinci Learning Ways to Wealth. Job well done. And we're going to move along to our uh, next presenter from the University of Akron, 
battery drop. And just a reminder, uh, you can make your way up here, please. A reminder, the yellow sheet, you will have one minute left to finish your presentation. When the red sheet uh, is shown, your time is up. So let's welcome up to the stage uh, Eli Lofman, Bradley Mull, and Bryson Hill from the University of Akron Battery Drop. Good evening, judges. My name is Eli Lofton here with Battery Drop, and I'd like to start off by telling you guys a little bit about our product. You gotta hurry up, man. We only have like four minutes to present this. The battery's gotta be dead. I'll, I'll throw them away real quick, all right? Well, you can't just throw them away. What do you mean? Why not? Let me tell you why. Currently, it's estimated that three billion batteries are thrown away each year in just the Americas alone, and with the battery market projected to grow by 16% in the coming years, this issue is just gonna become more and more prevalent. Not to mention, Batteries are carcinogens, and if you don't know what that means, they're agents of cancer that affect different parts of your everyday life, seeping into soil, waterways, and even airways, contaminating what you breathe and affecting your daily life. So what is our solution? Battery drop, helping you recharge the environment one battery at a time. So once you receive your battery drop recycling bin, use the battery tester on the side of the product to test to charge your batteries. Then you fill the battery drop up with dead or unwanted batteries. And once you do this, you scan the QR code on the side of the bin to find your nearest e-recycling center where you would take them and dispose of your dead batteries. So let's talk numbers. With an initial investment of $600, we were able to turn that and make a uh, return on investment of 727%, creating 109 total sold units. So Sharks, just imagine what your investment can do today. So, Sharks, to show you the impact on our product, each battery drop holds a little over 400 batteries. And since we've sold 109 units and donated seven more to schools, this means we have helped save the estimated value of 46,000 batteries from going into landfills in just our community alone. So our target market. As somebody who grew up probably playing a little too much video games, I know that we fly through batteries. So we feel like that would be a good place to start. I also grew up with two older siblings, and I couldn't tell you guys a toy that we had that did not use batteries. So we also felt like that would be a good place to look. Lastly, we would be environmentalists and people who just want to save the environment in general. So what could you expect with a possible investment? Well, for starters, we want to look towards a bigger finished product. One battery drop believes that we have right now is just merely a prototype. We feel like there's better wraps. We feel like there's better ways we can incorporate a better design. And with an investment today, you can help us do that. Not to mention, we can even invest in technology to actually break down the batteries. This is a huge profit margin because if we're able to break down batteries, we can resell and remelt the, what we got from breaking them down and sell them to other corporations to increase our net profit margin margins. Next, you can look at more advertising. We can put in a bunch on social medias with per certain paid outcomes. And we can also look at getting a professional website done and hiring a professional. And five, five, finally, is a community outreach. The more and more we get our name out, the more and more people who are going to be actively recycling batteries in your community, making it a safer place. So as you saw on that financial side, we are a profitable company. So we felt like it would be just for us to give back to the local community that we had. So last year, for every 50 units we sold, we gave one back to the community by going into local elementary classrooms and actually educating the youth on pro uh, proper recycling habits. But we'd like to shift this. So for this year, we'd like to, um, for every 50 units we sell, put a jumbo battery drop at local schools so um, the community can go themselves and recycle their batteries there. So, Sharks, what do you say? Will you help us recharge the environment one battery at a time with battery drop? Any questions? Thank you. Can you go back to the slide with the sales numbers? Yeah. Okay, so... So you're selling... So this, I buy this box. I buy this, this kit, and it comes to me. They cost twenty seven dollars and fifty cents. Is that right? Is that what I'm seeing there? We've had some sales that have happened, so that's like a like a 
like an average pricing range. Okay. So we usually sell them for twenty five dollars. We've had some sales that have gone for twenty five. So yeah, so usually the market price that we sell them at is thirty dollars, but we were running like holiday sales and such for a discounted price. Okay, all right. And so, so basically, I'm, I'm getting this container that's a, the reminder that hey, I need to do the right thing for the environment. I'm putting my batteries in it, and I'm scanning a QR code and it's saying go to a third party store. Yeah, so that's one thing that we'd like to look forward to is actually getting it so we receive those batteries and break them down ourselves. Okay. We feel like that'd be another branch that we could reach into and also gra uh, grab some revenue from. Okay, all right. Well, that's where I was going, so you foreshadowed the additional follow-up, so. Thank uh, you. Okay, all right, I get it. Um, is there a, a technology that exists out there, like like say as simple as a, a magnet that, you know, if I throw the batteries in the trash and it goes to the, re to the, to the landfill, and then it, the batteries go underneath the magnet, just pulls the batteries out of the trash. The problem with that is all metals would get pulled in with it, yep. so it'd be a long sorting process. Okay. So we feel like having a separate container in your home would be very much more simpler for you to remember okay. that it's there and keep it actually like your recycling bin or your trash can. And as, as the person that's recycling the battery, do I get reimbursed at the recycle place? With so it varies on location. Some locations do reimburse you. Um, it's per pound is usually the rate that they have. Okay. We saw is around, what is it, 70 cents a pound? 70 cents a pound. And then some places then again do not reimburse you that. Okay. Because this is a, it's a big problem, right? I mean, I, I mean, we take calls at our office for companies that want to come in and do an audit on all the batteries that we use at the, at the plant. Yeah, and they want to come there with trucks and take all the batteries and you know, bring them out, so, okay. Thank uh, you. What is this thing for on the side? Like yeah, so that's dead. a battery tester. So okay. one thing that we also encourage is to know that your battery is actually dead before you throw it away. And so sometimes when that battery still has charge in it, it's more likely to leak um, acid and energy into the environment. Also with the battery tester, um, for starters, this doesn't actually use batteries as a lot of our other competitors do. A lot of uh, the time, if you look for this on the market, it'll already be using batteries to contribute to the problem. Not to mention, this ranges from every single household battery that you could possibly own fits in one. It goes from 9 all the way up to D as it, as it varies in range. And there's a tester on the top for your miscellaneous ones. Well, let me understand that what, if the battery's not working, then it's dead. But I think what you're saying is if I got a remote with two batteries and the remote stops working, it's probably because one battery is not working and I end up throwing both away. Right. Yeah, that's correct. I, I don't know about you guys, but we have a junk door in my house that just has batteries in it. And sometimes when like my favorite sports scene's on, I'm trying to watch the Browns or yeah, something, yeah. I don't know what battery's dead and what's not, and that would help you with that. Got it. And you end up throwing both out, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that helps that. Is there anything in particular that's structurally different for this versus me just buying a trash can and doing the same thing in my house? Yeah, so one thing is moisture is a big problem. So this was our older prototype. We did change the lids so it would be more moisture-free. So your battery's actually in our tubs not these ones, but our other ones can last up to six years without moisture, of course. So if you were to just have like a cardboard box, easily water can get on it and it could pollute just in your home itself. Oh, okay. Okay. So um, sales this year. Yeah, that's a great question. So we actually are waiting on a few patents and everything. So we were a JA company. So last year we were able to sell and we were under them. But since this year we are not under them, we're waiting, we're treading lightly here we're hoping on developing a little bit of a better product than what we have currently and that's what your funds will be used for and also patents and such yes i was going to ask what what your what our money was going to go towards so um so you have not secured patents yet or um trademarks correct yeah we're, we're in the process of doing that and that's what some of those funds would go towards as well okay. right good are we are we out of time i didn't even look at you yeah okay okay yeah, I think I, I, so. So the unique selling, you know, proposition here is it's at my house. I don't have to drive to the because you you see the recycle bins scattered around. I don't have to drive drive around. So it's a, it's a it's a novel concept. I think. Also, uh, a small safety thing. Um, if you were to just throw your batteries, your household batteries, in the trash, whether you would put alkaline and lithium just in your trash can. They have a tendency to spark and ignite, and you could start a house fire just from throwing away your batteries in your trash can. So that's just why this is a very safe and viable moisture-free container. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Thank you.
All right, we will move along now to our third team. Uh, just a reminder again for our next team coming up, yellow sheet means one minute left, red sheet means your time is up, and if you can, hold the mic as close to your mouth uh, when you're speaking so uh, everybody can hear you. Let's move along to team three from Malone University, Perform X, Daniel Ogbana, Steve Hennis, and virtually joining us will be Levente Kohari. So gentlemen, come on up. Sorry, Sharks, you know, a lot of t t technical difficulty. Ready? Hey, Sharks, my name is Daniel, and I'm one of the co-founders for PerformX. Hi, Sharks, my name is Steven. I'm a social media coordinator here at PerformX. Here's what we'll be uh, touching upon tonight to help guide you through our company's ideas and processes. I am the oldest child of two Nigerian immigrant parents. I moved to the United States at the age of 16 years old with a passion for playing sports. It was difficult for me to get to, re to get recruited to play my sports at a high level. Performance aims at trying to help athletes like myself who have struggled to get an affordable education and play their sports, whether it be locally or internationally. Athletes worldwide struggle to express themselves fully as trans athletes, which results in them not being able to fulfill their dreams of playing sports at a high level. How can you take that away from the kid? Performance will give any athlete from any background, especially like myself, a fighting chance to get a proper education and to express themselves in their sports. Performex is staff of athletes who have all gone through the recruiting process. Our college-age staff is able to connect with these younger athletes who are in the same generation as us. 
Our experience with the breakthrough of NIL deals and our experience of social media will give athletes more meaningful exposure. It will also be boosted through a partnership with educational and sport organizations and by utilizing social media advertising and sponsorships. Additional services offered include nutrition guides, breakout session, sorting, transcript translation, and academic coaching designed to ensure our student athletes perform on and off the field. There's also uh, 442,000 possible candidates, including international students. By providing the competitive rates and streamlining the college entry process, aims to substantially build this market. As we continue to grow, our expansion plans include entering new sectors such as the content creation, sports appeal, and manufacturing of stat tracking devices. Starting with a $300,000 revenue in, a, in our first year, by year five, with the expansion into academic recruitment and the previously stated sectors, revenues are projected to hit $6 million. By year 10, as the ventures mature and our market is in solid price, we anticipate revenues reaching approximately $25 million. This is our process that we worked on with our 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 protocols of ten. It's it's user friendly and it aims to help athletes and coaches to bridge that gap in communication. And then here's some feedback that we received from coaches about our product, as well as here's some uh, evidence of the engagement we received on our Instagram page from our intended audience. We are building more than an average company. We are building a family. Let's seize the opportunity to test on the future together. Thank you so much for considering the partnership that promises not just the returns, but legacy that helps athletes and their families across the world. So have you built this? Is it working? Like, help us understand where you are in the process. Right now, we are in the process of almost finished building it. So, so I got a, a programming team of 10. So that this, so I just started the work already. I have been to launch by end of May, early June. That would, to get it to add it early on. And I've also been in talks with different level coaches. And I've been connected with coaches from Division 1 all the way to Juco level to to, to be able to see if they actually like this idea. And that's why we need to get so much engagement on our social media page as well. Uh, so who's your competition in this space? NTSA would be our competition. Okay, that's, so I, that's who I thought, yeah. That's the reason because, um, so I used a, um, NTSA coming to the to Malone University because I got track there. And they made it kind of impossible to get to it because like they would, they would kind of talk to parents and get them involved in it. But yeah, that, like their rates were really high. Like you have to pay up to five thousand dollars for the kids to be able to even do anything in sports. Um, one of our partners, who is a basketball player on his way to play pro, pro, pro professional, he came to US from London, and like we do the same thing to him. He had to pay five thousand dollars to get his name out there, so our coaches can see him and see his talents. Like that should not be the case. Like that should be open to everybody to be able to use. So is there any any other competitors? I mean, they're the biggest. So is there anybody else that's in that space? That's the only one that I can see that could be okay. those uh, threats. But like we're yeah. making it free for athletes and coaches as well as well. The thing that we don't plan on charging athletes and coaches five thousand, six thousand, like five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen. Like be yourself. Show your talents. I'm great. That's it. Yeah, we have other competitors like 247 Sports and Huddle, but we're a more all-encompassing website that we are going to replicate what they have but expand upon that. Yeah, so, yeah, Huddle was the other one I was thinking about because that's, that's very popular in the United States. I don't know how popular it is worldwide, but it's interesting. So, so from a global perspective, perspective, NCSA and Huddle, they're – I mean, NCSA, I think, is global, but I don't know about Huddle. So, so you guys are really looking toward the international side of this, is the way I understand it, or you just are bringing another product to market to compete against those guys? I would say we're looking at both local and international because those products are very expensive. So, like, can we get affordable for international students and local students? We'll be good okay. for both of them. 
What do you think they'll do once you hit the market with there? I, I've, I've never seen a price difference this tremendous. What do you think their move would be when you hit the market at something that's? I would uh, say ninja price. <laughs> no, no, I, no, it's a hey, actually, no joke. That's a real possibility. I mean, that's, right? that's absolutely <laughs> what's that's yep, producing. That's, that's right. absolutely what's going to happen. But I, I want to know, like, um, do they have the leeway to come down in price, or otherwise, you guys are like Uber. I mean, you guys have the market at that point. Why would why would I ever go there if I can go to your place for five bucks in a, a month right. or something? So, so like we, can, so like the way their structure works is very complicated in the sense that like they have to go through so many hoops to make sure that everybody's able to or you know, like let's talk to your parents, like, let's do this, let's do that. What like like what the essence of athletes, you have the power, create your name. Coaches, you do the same thing. Like it's right there for you to just follow. Oh, people. okay, I see. That's that's the uniqueness of it. So you're okay. So you're saying that Malone University is gonna put their coaches are going to build a little site that kids can can hit with with their stuff, yes. you know, right right to them, right get to right them. right to them, get directly, and not there's not a middleman. You're you're a subscription service or something that you're. Is that am I articulating yes. that right? Okay. Like right. the like the coaches. So like like for example, like our profile, like the coaches will have what they expect in their future student have the maybe car center, right? Two point seven GPA, maybe this is for maybe for like what should be this like this good in class or like. Or like we're looking for athletes for this and that. Like the athletes can see that and we're like, okay, that's the right school for me. So I can talk to the coach and let's see how we can talk about it and figure it out. So like from anywhere in the world. So like I'm from Nigeria. People would think it's a third world country. Well not really a third world country. But like getting but like getting athletes from there, like I like I have friends who are now Olympians. For for Team Ghana, for Team Nigeria, we like we need to talk to them and see how they like this idea. They're like, if we had that earlier, we'd have brought a lot of our friends to the US and we're going to education and going to play sports at their level. Like also think of also expanding into the education sector as we go on. But like, you know, start with sports and then we're going to go into education because most universities like to bring in kids who have great values, who have gifts. So like imagine this, let's say there's a kid who, who has like a four point oh, right? And like the kid wants to come here. The, like the universities will be able to reach out to us and be like, oh, which kids do you have here that can do this? And then the kids come here and they're able to create whatever they need to create and then the school can get credit and the kid can get credit. In the that the school can get popularity. Or oh, yeah, like we have the next up with Einstein and the, and the student themselves can be like, oh, I attended this university. Yeah. I would How'd you come up with the name? So it was it was more my idea, but like the the gente was more of a, oh like let's go through that. So like I thought of like oh performance exercise. So like a performing and exercise. So like that's kinda of how I thought about it. First first put put the first one on. Put the first slide up. Okay. Yeah. Fueling dreams. Like the swag on that. Yeah. So. We're over time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. That's right. All right. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We move along now as uh, the Sharks uh, marking down some notes uh, for their deliberations a little bit later on. Uh, we move along now to team number four. And again, a couple of reminders. You'll see the yellow sheet held up. That means you have one minute left. The red sheet, your time is up. And uh, get this mic as close to your mouth as possible so everybody watching as well as in the back of the room can hear you. So team number four from Kent State University, Societal Heights Marketing Agency. Let's welcome up to the stage Angelique Wong.
Good evening. My name is Angelique Wong, and I'm currently pursuing a Master's of Science in Emerging Media and Technology at Kent State. And I did my undergrad there in fashion design and business. So you're in for a ride, because that's about neither of these. So in Ohio, 150,000 new businesses were created in 2022. That is a record-setting number. That means we have a lot of people with a lot of ideas, and they want to implement it. Now, the funny thing is, over 60% of business owners are between the ages of 40 to 60 but your average social media user is between 20 to 40. So now we've identified a very clear disconnect in exposure and understanding when it comes to the people who use social media and the people who need it. How do I help them? Through a few things, starting with our marketing series. So the marketing series has been around for about two years. I started it at Kent State LaunchNet. It was meant to be a tool for student entrepreneurs, staff, and alumni to ask the questions they were afraid of when it comes to digital marketing. We tailor it to the needs of the university and organization. We literally sit on a survey. We ask, what do you have questions about? What are you afraid to ask? What don't you understand? Social media management and content creation services are things that I facilitate for businesses. So some people want nothing to do with socials. They just want to hand me the content and go about their merry day. And some people just need the content and do it all themselves. This can be on a range of services and monthly basis. And then I would like to add to my repertoire digital products. This allows entrepreneurs of different stages to get the information that they need to understand the digital market, but to also learn at their own pace. Now, how big is this market? How much money am I able just to make? The digital marketing industry is worth over $322 billion in 2022. The digital goods market is worth over $950 billion. And this global social media management market is worth over $16 billion in 2022. We are now in 24, so I can confirm that the number has gone up. Additionally, I only need 1% of this to be successful in helping entrepreneurs nationwide. So, what am I gonna use the money for? Actually, let's jump back, there we go. What are my revenue streams? <laughs> so the marketing series costs $3,000 and it's done over a three month or semester basis with typically two sessions a month. These can range from one hour to two hours to 45 minutes, depending on the attention spans, desires, and requests of the students. Some organizations are just entrepreneurs from different communities, and we also send out a survey to ask what you're looking for, why, and how can we help you. And these are in-person and virtual, so we typically combine it so no one gets a barrier to learning the information, and free to the people who attend. Social media management is done on a three, or 12, three six, or 12-month basis. These packages can range from 300 and upwards of $1,500 a month. For some organizations, if they want additional services like advertising and content creation, that will determine the price of your package per month. And then digital products can range anywhere from $5 to $30. Entrepreneurs can use these at their own pace, speed, and allows me to expand beyond just the things that I do manually. Blogs, courses, YouTube communities, Patreon subscriptions, as long as I provide the information. Now, what am I gonna do with all this money? I need to expand my team. Everything I've mentioned today, I completely do by myself. Uh, Adobe and we just work really hard and spend a lot of time on it. So having just simply a copywriter and a graphic designer which can range from 50 to 120 dollars an hour would allow me to up the output, up the quality, and give people what they need. Additionally, I got to enhance my technology. Keeping my expenses low means I keep everything in-house. Every piece of content you ever see of me on the internet, and I'm all over it, is done by my hands. So more people, better technology, means the more work we can do and the better work for the people we serve. To close my pitch, I share a testimonial with you from the Assistant Director of Marketing at LaunchNet Kent State. It's where I got my start, where I got my confidence, and where I went back ultimately to give the same information and assistance I received. When we started the marketing series, it was completely free. I just gave them my time because I wanted to contribute to my community. So I'm able to do that through digital marketing services. Small businesses are people who had an idea and they deserve the support to make it happen. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> um, so you went from f from fashion merchandise, fashion and design, right, mm -hmm. to this. So um, why should someone call you versus so, calling, say, me? So to clarify, <laughs> my original undergrad degree is in fashion design, but I am not a one-track entrepreneur. This is actually let's say two and a half, because I have this little side venture I started to get into lately, but we have, have two businesses. I actually have a fashion brand where I do boutique ready-to-wear, and I also do special occasions in bridal. And then I have my marketing baby, which came about because uh, COVID, I realized we don't really need clothes in emergencies. 
But <laughs> businesses were forced to take the reins on social media and online. So I spent those, that year and a half that we were <laughs> kicked off campus uh, understanding and learning this, spending hours all day online. Uh, and I was also selling masks on Etsy because I had nothing to do. And my dad was like, you have a skill. Use it for the people. And I was like, OK. And I made almost 10K doing that uh, through Etsy and just family and friends and word of mouth. I had professors from school and stuff. I was like, wow. Who knew people needed things when there's a demand? And so that taught me a lot. So real life experience is how I've gotten everything in my life to the point that I'm at. And then LaunchNet took a chance on me and hired me as a student marketing manager. And that catapulted me into working in real estate. Um, I've actually worked at Stark Library as well as their digital marketing manager. So my experience is just as valuable as the knowledge that I know. Um, I was like sitting there one day and I was like, I really want people to understand that the internet can take their lives to new heights. And I was like, that sounds kind of cool. And then um, I had to take an art history class that was really freaking hard. And it took me two tries to get the grade I wanted. And it made me think of like, that's where I learned about like bourgeois, bourgeoisie? The word is wrong, but society people and high class and all that. So societal heights, because we take your marketing to new heights. <laughs> So, so your, your business idea here is, if I understood correctly, sometimes I don't. Wait, before you ask that, I need to clarify something. Uh, this is an active venture. Uh, in the last year, I've made about $12,000 for my marketing series and social media management and content creation services through online partnerships, teaching the series, judging on panels similar to this. I was like, even to this day, I have a couple events coming up in the next few weeks to get myself out there to show people that even though I don't come from traditional, I can help you. I understand these platforms. I immerse myself in it every hour of every day. And you can't do that. So you should pay me money to do it for you. <laughs> now, sorry to interrupt, but I was like, oops, okay. I didn't say that part. So, so you're, 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 if I understood the target market for you mm -hmm. is to go into small entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or people just starting out or, or businesses, say, uh, 10 million below to help them increase their presence on social media. Is that, that's what I articulate. Right, because most businesses don't really realize that your online presence and the development of your business play a direct correlation into your strategy, sales, and success. The more disorganized you are, the more unlikely you're able to take advantage of it when consumers are actually looking for you. Even in smaller spaces like when I'm pitching, I realize most of the businesses never even mention marketing, and it's much bigger than online and advertising. But to get business owners who've never even done this before to understand that, uh, they need to know why it's valuable and what it means and how it plays into their lives. Even today when editing this, I took out a slide that was like just logos of brands that we all know and me telling you why you all know them because they've created emotional bonds with you and their consumers. Uh, and I've identified that almost unintentionally the space that it, it is in because I started this as a student so in my undergrad. So I was like, that's what I was surrounded by, you know, entrepreneurship organizations, the universities and students. And I was like, all of these have like something in common. People who use social media without a business so they don't realize the value. People who don't like to use it in their personal lives but still need it. And people who started their businesses prior to what social media is now, but one of their businesses, another 20, another 30, another 40. So that's how I found them. <laughs> what's, the, what's the vision? Because you've got a lot going on. You've got lots of, I mean, clearly you're a natural entrepreneur. You're, <laughs> you're starting new things like, like all of us do. What's, what's your vision? Uh, my vision is to one day integrate marketing services into the education of entrepreneurship from the start. I think a lot of people think, I need, a, I need an idea and I need money. But if you don't have a plan, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. And I have wasted well over 30, 40, probably 50 grand. I've invested personal income when I was working full time, pitches, grants, every dollar to my name goes back into what I do, regardless of which one we're talking about, because I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> I have no doubt you're good. Uh, how do we scale this? So you're, you're just one person. So if someone invests money in this, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're good at what you do, very good at it. But how do you, how do you? Uh, so the funding actually goes directly into ensuring that I can scale this damn near exploded by 100% or more. Uh, I cannot anymore put out the amount of just learning material needed to be successful in the multi-forum of social. Like TikTok, I need to be posting two to three videos a day, two to about five times a week. LinkedIn, I need to be putting out a blog minimum once or twice a week. I can do one blog a week. I can do five posts a week. I can do a couple things. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok can typically be the same content. 
but I also have to do the lesson plans. I also do mm-hmm. the learning materials. I do their notes. I can't do it all by myself anymore. So what finances would allow me to do is expand the team past myself. I want to contract entrepreneurs so that we're working on this many blogs at one time, this many videos versus as I pay you, then we get the work. So that's my goal. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. All right, so far four in, five more to go, total of nine presentations. Uh, Sharks continuing uh, to take notes for their uh, conversations after we're all done. And don't forget, uh, coming up, uh, when they do deliberate, uh, we'll have uh, a musical guest up here to entertain you, and we'll do some trivia, give away some gift cards. But we move along to our next presentation, and this will be team number five from Walsh University. Spicky and Charlene Perry will be making the presentation right now up here on stage. And Charlene, don't forget, yellow means one minute, red means a time up, and hold the mic close to your mouth. Here you go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Charlene. I'm a nursing student from Walsh University. And I am here today to shed light on a pressing issue in the healthcare industry, the decline in patient care. With the increasing demands on medical professionals and the overwhelming number of patients they must attend to, the quality of care has been suffering. But fear not, for I have developed a revolutionary invention that will not only improve patient care, but also ease the burden on healthcare workers. Introducing the Speaky, an innovative self-cleaning machine that will revolutionize patients' daily hygiene routine. Say goodbye to inadequate patient care. With Speaky, cleanliness is just a push of a button away. Sorry about that. As a healthcare worker, I've encountered numerous instances where patients, in an, where patients are in an exceptionally unclean condition. Imagine your loved ones sitting on a comfortable shower chair or lying on a comfortable shower bed where a gentle mist of cleaning solution envelopes their body, wiping away dirt, sweat, and bacteria in just minutes. My state-of-the-art technology combines the power of ultraviolet light and a frayed heat to kill germs and eliminate odors, leaving them feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. But that's not all. Speaky is customizable to spit their unique needs and preferences. They can choose from a variety of scented cleansing solutions to elevate their sensory experience, adjust the temperature and pressure settings for a personalized cleanse, and even integrate essential oil massages and moisturizers for a spa-like treatment. This is just a demonstration. Um, So we have, it's kind of like a commode, um, and there's like a bodysuit that wraps around the body. There's different pumps that connect to the commode and also to the suit um, that supplies the water and the soap. There's a tank in the back that has three slots, one for water, one for soap, and one for the heat to dry the body off. Um, Let's see. So, yep, that's that. The speaky can be sold to retailers, beauty companies, healthcare providers, and patients living in their homes. The target market is huge as anyone can benefit from using the Speaky. So how is the Speaky different? The Speaky does all of the cleaning and scrubbing for you. You just sit and relax. The Speaky will handle the rest. Patients will no longer have dry skin. The Speaky will apply essential oils to help hydrate the skin and keep the skin moist. The Speaky is 100% safe and comfortable. It also reduces different skin diseases on patients. 
Um, okay, so how will the speaky generate revenue or how will I generate revenue? I could sell the speaky to consumers through online marketplaces, retail stores, and direct consumer sales. I could offer a subscription service for consumable products or maintenance services related to the speaky. I can also hire a company to come out and assist the patients with the speaky and if they need assistance. Um, I could explore licensing agreements or partnerships with companies in the health and wellness industry to integrate the speaky into their products or services. So join the future of personal hygiene and wellness with Speaky. Experience unparalleled convenience, efficiency, and cleanliness with every use. Upgrade patients' daily routine and invest in their health with Speaky because a cleaner, healthier body starts here. That's very interesting. Thank you. So, so the patient that can't get in the shower, at, I'm, I'm going to talk hospital right now. Okay. The patient that can't get into the shower, how, how do they get into something like that? So we can have healthcare workers assist with that, or we can hire actual people to help come okay. out and assist with that. Yeah. So, go ahead. The product is a suit? Yes. I have to tell you, that in three years of Star Tank for me, this is the most intriguing product. It is. It, it, it's got Thank me. From it's the time me. I first read it or heard about it when we were looking early on at these pitches, I thought, what in the world? I, <laughs> because basically what you're saying, it's, it's kind of like an instant shower in a way, or a, an artificial shower, which is just off the wall, and it's kind of cool. Is but first of all, I thought of it from a healthcare perspective, of yeah, course, that's and I, I, I do believe everybody has a human right to be clean and smell good, and, 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 and I really mean that. So let me ask you this. What about people that, like, work out during the work day and the, there's not a shower at the workplace? Could they actually go in their office and put this thing on and clean up? I mean, does it work like that well? Yes, they have a, it's a portable tank that's in the back that can get filled with water and then you can also use it that way as well. I mean, well. it's portable, right? Like you could carry it to an office. Yes. You go for a jog, you come back, shut your door, you put this suit on. Theoretically, you could be clean and I don't know how long it takes. <laughs> However long you want it to take. <laughs> it's got a massage feature. I can't so believe it. You get a massage, you get a <laughs> spa-like treatment, yeah. you get it all. It's a, it's a, it's a shower suit. <laughs> it's a shower suit. <laughs> Is there any is there any competitor? Is there what's your research on anything like this? I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I've done my research and I haven't came across anything that matches that. I filed a patent and oh yeah, it was cleared. So you filed a patent? I did file a patent. You have a oh, wow. wow! Yeah, wow. thank you. Okay, uh, so now we're talking here. So. <laughs> So did you uh, talk? Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Have you talked to anybody about production? <laughs> I have not yet, but that's definitely um, that's one of my goals. If I was to win the money, I would reach out and begin to talk about it and um, reach out to different um, manufacturers to try to get everything going. So I, okay. you, you use the suit, and then do you have to clean the suit to use it again, or it actually clean? It's just, it's self cleaning. Good grief! Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, and then I'm assuming that, you know, the water, when a, when a hospital is considered like, you know, bath water at the end, it's biohazard, so it's got to be drained, drained, drained. And tanks and all that, so that's, okay, so that's all details to work out, you know, thing. but the concept is, I think, you, I think you're on to something, because Thank you. You know, that, that can speed up the process of getting people clean and keeping them, you know, there's many, many, you know, skin rashes yeah. that happen on people that are bedridden and different things like that, that it, just because they can't get clean correctly. So Do you think you can go direct to consumer with this without the FDA getting involved or something? Because I think about like the CPAP machine. Me personally, I think it's ridiculous that the CPAP machines have to go through a doctor process and so forth because they should be just be sold on the shelves at Walmart. That's my opinion. Is probably, this thing going to get tied probably up? Probably depends on how it's marketed. Because yeah. if it's marketed as a medical thing, it's one thing. But if it's marketed as yeah. 
shower at the office. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I don't. You, I don't. You know, know what I mean? How, like I don't port- know how those portable shower. Work. At which point do the regulators yeah, jump in and go, "Uh, you know, we have to have our hands on this thing." Yeah. This. Yeah, I, th- I think you're probably going to get into not that we should be discussing, that, like, but I think you get into the to the the area that if you're selling to hospitals or you're selling that 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 methodology, you're going to have some regulation yeah, you have to do that. Got associated it. with it. But Got it. If you keep it to the if you have a, a model that's to the general public, yeah. You know, this is reminding me of the simple concept of the ice machine. You, have you guys experienced those where you just wrap your injury, start pumping ice water around mm-hmm. around your machine? It's the it's the same concept, hmm. except it's your whole body now, and you're cleaning, you're running yeah. clean solution through your whole body. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, it's a good idea. Well, one more question. The name. How'd you come up with the name? And <laughs> So I was just sitting at home, and uh, I was thinking about speaking span. So it's kind of short for that. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. so you're, you're at Walsh, right? So I am. Walsh, yes. and you're a nursing student? Right. Okay. When do you graduate? In December of in this December. year. Okay. Yes. Well, this is really cool. I mean, you you basically took a shower and turned it into something else. It's just fabulous. Thank you. Great idea. All right. Time now to move on to team number six from Stark State College. Rays of Sunshine Company, Shaquille Fluellen is here on stage to make her presentation again. Yellow card means one minute, red card means you're done, and the microphone is yours. Good evening, judges. Can you hear me? My name is Shaquille Fluellen, um, and this is Rays of Sunshine Co. Imagine you're online surfing, and you're walking through a local uh, clothing store, and you see a tie-dye t-shirt. Why or why not would you buy that t-shirt? Is it possible that you're concerned about your skin? Would it itch? What if I told you that your fashion choices, um, your fashion choices could uh, change the world? At Raise the Sunshine Co., the what if can turn into a reality by revolutionizing the tie-dye industry with sustainable fashion, with uh, natural dyes and uh, innovative technology. The founder's journey. So my name is Shaquille. Um, I go to Stark State College. I'm a computer graphic arts design student. Um, In 2020, I was diagnosed with psoriasis. Um, As a child, I always had a childhood dream, a childhood passion of creating tie-dye. And when I got diagnosed with psoriasis and I started buying tie-dye, it inspired me um, to create Rays of Sunshine um, as I would create most of my designs outside in the sun. Um, And the sun is good for psoriasis as a healing agent. Um, In 2021, I participated in a farmer's market in Columbus, Ohio, which I'm born and raised from. Um, And I was able to um, create and sell 60 tie-dye clothing items. So the marketing potential and positioning, um, about 1,200.5 billion by 2028 um, with the tie-dye marketing Um, targeting uh, eco-conscious millennials such as myself um, and Gen Z's people who um, who sorry Um, so 
the strategic marketing initiatives consist of campus engagement, um, such as joining clubs as the LGBTQ, um, digital presence using uh, my digital graphic design skills and creating a virtual try-on technology, um, and also community events such as other pop-up shops um, in Akron, Canton, and Columbus areas. So with the $25,000, I would use um, in funding strategies such as my production enhancement, uh, my marketing initiatives, and technology advancement, which would go towards the virtual try on technology. Um, because I am a graphic computer arts design student, I create all my logo, websites, um, advertising, and marketing, um, including my tie-dye clothing. So. This would allow me to hire more graphic designers and other staff that will allow me to create my tie-dye clothing as I can't do all of this by myself. Um, it took me a whole year just to make the 60 items that I had that consisted of t-shirts, um, canvas bags that people loved. Um, so that's what I would like to do with the money. Um, so the impact and community contribution, um, I would partner with uh, local artisans, um, educate others in the community um, about eco-friendly practices using natural ingredients such as fruits, vegetables, flowers, and plants, um, in which these natural ingredients can be reused instead of wasted into the earth. Um, as I've seen some of my competitors that make uh, bulk tie-dye, they have a lot of wastewater. So why not take that and repurpose it? Um, for example, if I take rose petals and I boil it in water, I could use that water to then dye any type of clothing. But then once I'm done with it, I could create that rose water for my hair or for my skin, as rose water has, um, it has enhancements for the skin and hair. Um, and also, I would like to start a new standard of fashion, you know, utilizing natural ingredients that are good for the skin um, and for the earth. So that's me. Uh, join Rays of Sunshine and weaving sustainability into fabric of our lives. Um, invest in a sustainable future and wear your values of your sleeve. Thank you. So are you saying, so when your, your product that you make, all of the, your dyes are natural? Talk to me about natural, what yeah, that means like versus. That, yeah, that will be the goal. So regular tie dye that they use is like a powder dye that's consists of like sodium chloride um, and like some toxic chemicals that allow the dye to stain. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm trying to do is utilize natural ingredients such as fruits because they have stains and vegetables and plants. Um, another example is coffee grounds. Um, you could utilize that and extract it with water to create the color of dye. Um, and that eliminates the possibility of having like maybe allergic reaction. Like I said, I have psoriasis um, and sensitive skin. So I really have to, you know, look at the ingredients of a shirt that's being made. Um, and I know a lot of people that have sensitive skin who would want to wear something that's natural, but yet, you know, resourceful yeah. in the ingredients. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. my daughter has that issue, so it's fascinating. So when you were at the farmer's market and you sold 60, uh, I may have missed it. What was your profit on those 60? I didn't, I didn't say my profit. Um, I made about $200 with the 60 items. I was selling them about 5 to $10. My bags were like $5 a piece, and those went like very quickly because I did um, different patterns that you may or may not have seen. Um, but I would like to take my logo and different graphic designs that you or your family, friends that you would want to make and put it on um, a tie-dye t-shirt. You could pick the pattern, you could pick mm -hmm. the color palettes. Um, like I said, since I'm a graphic designer, I have the ability to create a message that you would like to put on a t-shirt, you know, a tie-dye t-shirt or a hoodie or even a bag. Yeah, that's, that's pretty unique. I mean, uh, I, I like the idea of the, the, the natural, you know, colors and things. Uh, yeah. Does a shirt last as long 
or is it is it something that because it's so natural that if you wash it a couple of times or do you have to, is there special instructions for washing? Right, right. Um, well, I'm still trying to explore that. I know just from my own experience, um, natural dyes don't last as long as the other dyes that they have because they put more chemicals in there. Um, but I would like to explore it more. Maybe I have to soak the material in the dye longer, um, or maybe I could utilize uh, another ingredient that is still easily disposable to the earth, but not harmless to the skin. Like the name, it's a good name, good logo. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And you got a vision there too, so that you checked a lot of boxes okay. with, with, the, with the business, so. Okay. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We move along now to our seventh team that will be coming up here to the stage for their presentation from the University of Mount Union and uh, the company name is Honk and this will be Garrett O'Connell as uh, he's introducing himself to uh, the Sharks right now and he'll come up and tell us about uh, his company and a reminder okay. uh, Garrett yellow sheet means one minute okay. red sheet means time is up looking dapper and the microphone is all yours Hello, my name is Garrett O'Connell. Technical difficulty, so sorry. <laughs> is that a car alarm going off? <laughs> I'm tired of always walking outside or hearing a car alarm go off, and I have to see, is that my car? I have to check my pockets, be like, oh, did I sit on something? I have to make sure whose car that is, or if my battery's gonna die or not like that. And the only way to find out if that's our car alarm going off, we have to walk out to our car, make eye contact with our car and say, all right, cool, that's not my car, and go on with our day. So I decided to create Honk. Honk is a, stands for Hear Our Noise Kit. It's a device that you will plug into your car right in the fuse box, and then the fuse box is inside the front of your car. So you'll plug that into the, your device, or the device will plug into your fuse box, and every time the car alarm is set off, it'll send a spark, and the spark will ignite the fuse to keep going, and it'll send you a notification to the little device I gave you there, just like that. So that will let you know that your car alarm is going off. So, and every car system has different spots on the car that just let you know the pressures, if somebody hits your car door, hits this, your car alarm goes off. And a lot of companies just put it into the brain right there, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says alarm brain. That's where a lot of the cords are, a lot of things, and if you clip one cord or you mess one thing up, it destroys everything. So with using the fuse box, it avoids all of that, avoids making another company come put it together because you can do it simply. So I don't know if anybody th ever thought about this or just me, but we all spend about maybe 5,000 to 25,000 on our car and we just leave it outside all day long. It's like basically leaving our wallet in the middle of the street. Just Maybe somebody can go grab it if they want. But it's a lot of money that we just leave outside. Maybe we're working outside or we're working all day, maybe 500 feet away from it. That's, you don't hear your car alarm. You don't know if that's your car alarm at all. So most car alarms go off for 5 to 15 minutes, and then they could die. Or newer cars have automatic shutoffs, but that's about it. And then most of them are false alarms. So yes, sometimes they could be somebody's breaking into your car or somebody could have dented it or anything like that. And those are just like, hey, letting you know that your car alarm is going off. And then just a quick little statistic that I found that over a million vehicles were stolen in 2022. So obviously that went up a little bit last or last two years because of Kia. I don't know if anybody heard about that, but a lot of Kias were broken into. So this could have event or got rid of that a lot. And every 
Uh, 116 vehicles are stolen per hour, so it's every 30 seconds. So not to scare anybody, but as we've been in here for an hour, probably all of our cars could have been stolen. <laughs> but they're not. But that's just a quick little, <laughs> put it in your head. So <laughs> our competitors in target market, um, most competitors, their car securities are like 170 to $400. And that's, you have to plug it into your car and make sure it's all set and gone. But, and they take about 40 minute, 20 to 40 minutes to set up. 10 tools needed, you need a soldering iron and all different things, and it takes a long time. And Tesla is also competitive because they have cameras on their cars, so that's just another way, but you have to install that. You have to like turn it on and then the cameras will watch. There's nothing constantly that's always on. And then Honk, there's no security system that has a device that you have on you and that plugs into your fuse box. There's nothing like that that has done it before like that. And then target market, obviously every car hopefully could use that, but or we're going to focus on just USA made cars first while we get it going and just ranging from 2010 to 2021. And just another fun fact, the most broken cars into are Honda Civics, Chevy trucks, and Kia. So they're all different. They're all from made all around the world. So it's just not one faulty state or country. Uh, retail price and production, so it cost me about $62 to make that because the device to plug into your car is so tiny and compact. It is, you think it's cheaper, but the technology is so advanced. So looking in the research of different types of coils that I would need for that makes it to $62. And the base model would be $100, and then premium model would be $150, but that would invite an app that we would put into the service as well. And that was for people that obviously have a, maybe a middle car that they're like, okay, this is a little bit nicer. And if they have a really expensive car, they would get a gold medal or a gold model with more stuff in it as well. And what do I need your help with today? I need a patent. So a patent, so make sure nobody can steal my idea so I can make sure we go with it. And then to make the plug-in device even better and make sure we can get it made and put it into the system. Insurance, since as we're messing with people's cars, we need to have a lot of insurance just so we're protected. And then I want to create the app for it as well. And a quick survey, just we did 300 people and at Mount Union all in, in, in Hudson area and 90% said they'd purchase it, 5% said they don't care, 3% said not an issue, and 2% of Mount Union students said they had no car. <laughs> uh, and quick little guy, his name is Gary the Goose. He's our mascot since it is honk. I just think of geese when you say honk, 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 honk. And then why honk? It improves safety, lawyers anno lowers annoyance, and can be used universally. And so let's make some noise in the car, uh, in the car security industry with honk. Thank you. I love the name. I love the name. Thank and you. I love the goose. It's good. Um, if this, so this is an alternative to current um, things. So do, does it make any noise in the car itself? Meaning normally the noise is there not just to annoy us, but because it's dissuasive to whoever who might be trying to steal your car. But does it, does it only ring here to me? That's a great question. So when the, somebody's breaking into your car, it makes no, it does make the normal car alarm noise, but they don't know that they have an extra security system. So it only would vibrate and make that noise to you personally. Gotcha. So that's how you know that's your car going off. Got it. So, so your, your basic model gets me this device right here. And then the, the device to plug into the car. And the device to plug into the car. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the premium model gets me the app, as you said. You get, what are you selling that for? So the app was 150 And that gets the app, and then I also allow the Bluetooth access to make sure, like, and it'll, that one would have a tracking device as well with the Bluetooth. Okay, that's what I wanted to have. So you would like know where your car is. Yes, that is okay. the, premium, or the premium one. That's 150 okay. And then the gold one would be a little bit more technological because of the nicer cars and newer cars have more advancement. We wouldn't want to just shove something in their fuse box. We'd want to make sure it's a little bit more technologically sound. Okay. So, uh, go ahead if you got a question because I'm trying to put my next question. Yes. Together. You're entertaining. You, you give an entertaining presentation. I like the tuxedo. Thank you. Just a really good presentation. I like the name. I mean, I'm, I'm laughing and I'm also... I'm engaged. This is a good, this is entertaining, a good presentation. You got me on a couple of issues. One, way to go on the on the gold, the silver. That's what businesses do. That's good. Absolutely. You did that. Secondly, I like the survey. Okay, because I'm 
I wouldn't have thought there was a market for this, but you've kind of, I mean, you've kind of convinced me, 300, that's a pretty good number. And these are college kids who probably don't have much money and they're saying they'd buy this. Yeah, so, they're college in town, people in my yeah. area as well. The reason I couldn't figure it out is I, I just assumed all the car companies now, if I buy a car, I can probably, they'll probably give me an app that would do what you're doing, but you're saying they don't, right? Correct. They They're, do not. Yeah, there's okay. nothing right now for anything that is just sends to yourself or anything. You I'm can lock shocked. your car, you okay. can do anything on your phone, okay. but there's nothing that will let you know your car alarm is going off. And you actually accomplished that with the second layer, the not the standard, but the, the next layer is the app. Right? Correct. Yes, the premium. Basically does that. Okay. Well, Tesla has that. It just, you got to pay a monthly software as a service to get it to actually buzz onto your phone. Yeah, so, so he, I mean, they're in the yeah. right. It's, this is a less expensive alternative that covers, yeah. you know, Oh, you know, 300 million makes, cars that are, yeah, that are out there yeah. that have anything like that. It's yeah. a lot so, of cars that are not Tesla. Yeah, yeah they're right. not yeah. Tesla. Yeah. Right? So, uh, yeah. What my, my question, my follow-up question I was going to ask, so have you done a patent search on your own to see if something like this exists? I have. I have done a few just, I put, I, and I actually put a trademark in here as well for it. Okay. So just putting in the few hundred dollars for that, but a patent search, there is nothing out there for that, a plug-in device to your fuse box or anything that would just send you a notification as well. Okay. The, the, only, the only thing I'm struggling with, mm -hmm. okay, is the, the initial cost. I think, uh, I, think I, I pay on my Tesla like twelve dollars and ninety five cents a month to have the security part okay and, and it was already built into the car they just turned it on with a software switch okay so once i started paying so i think i think the to get to the crowd i think the price has to be lower in at the subscription service okay i think so you think a subscription service would be better than a yeah, one-time payment be more affordable to the yeah. to the masses okay and and i think uh you know, you're not going to want a one-time installation fee of, you know, two hundred dollars or two hundred fifty dollars or whatever you had up there, or for or one hundred fifty for the platinum, and then on top of that, having having a, a subscription service to get the tracking and everything else like that. Okay. So in I your think, in your survey, did you say how much it would cost? Yeah. So I told them that it would be a hundred dollars just for the base of you'd get this and then the device. And these are random kids, right? These aren't your Yeah, friends. these are just me soliciting on Mount Union campus. These are people you don't know. I did not know. Okay. I, I maybe knew about 20 of them, but I don't, yeah, it was me on campus just yeah. asking people, don't tell the president back there that I was soliciting, but. <laughs> <laughs> he might let it ride. He might let it ride for tonight. Yeah. He'll let it ride if you wait and you hit it big. Yeah. He's going to ask for a donation back. He'll be okay with it then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, th it is a one-time payment. I'm not. I haven't thought of a subscription plan yet for the app either, though. It was yeah, just. I think a that's something fee. to consider. You Absolutely. Know, I mean, you, you did a survey. You did the legwork, mm -hmm. right? That's all part of the yeah. process of developing an idea, right? So, but I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking back to like yeah. the way my Tesla works. Absolutely. And and what I'm paying for that. And I saw your numbers up there, and you know, it's uh, it's something again. That's already developed into a, what you consider a high end car. Yeah. But if you go down to the model. Y, which is the less expensive version, which is twenty nine thousand or whatever. There you go. That's in there too. Already. Yeah. You know, you just got to turn it on. Yeah. It's the same price, but okay. I mean, it's, uh, it's something that that you need to consider on what that that new model looks like. Yeah. The subscription as a service, right Recur out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Recurring revenue. Recurring revenue is your friend. Is your friend. Yeah. It's gold. Yeah. It's a lifesaver. It's cash flow. It's everything you need. I didn't talk to too That's many all. Tesla owners yeah. in college, though. Right. So no, I should have <laughs> done that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but again, but again, you're looking at look look. We're pushing as a, as a as a country mm -hmm. to electric vehicles, right? Yeah. So that's a big push. And the Gen Zs, you know, we're all, everything that's up here is about being sustainable. We saw batteries, we saw the shirts, we saw all these things that are getting percent you know presented. So this sustainability thing is forcing the Gen Z to to really look and consider these electric vehicles that are going to have some of these things with it. But you still have a population of 300 million plus vehicles that are out there that aren't electric vehicles that are going to be here for a while. So, yeah, I'm kind, so of with Mark. Mark, I'm kind of with Mark on this one. I, I think the price would need to come down because okay. I think the I think your population is going to be probably the less expensive cars. Yeah. It's probably the ones that hurt the most when they get stolen mm -hmm. for, yeah. for different reasons. So you want to make that price in proportion to that 
the price of that car. But you're you're, you're going to be talking about you know a lot of probably lower end cars. Mm -hmm. and there's probably going to be a big demand for this. Can I like could I plug this into a car that's ten years old and it would work probably? Or? Yes, that's what we're trying to. Or I was figuring that was my price range just, or the range to start was 2010 mm -hmm. to 2021. Got it. So because I wanted to start there soon. Good. Cool. Great, great job. Great Thank, you. Thank you. Guys. Great Appreciate job. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Again, as uh, we started uh, Stark Tank tonight, I told you this was outside my comfort zone. I'm a sports guy, and this was something that I, I find very interesting in when I'm watching uh, on TV. But I'm blown away with the presentation so far. Can't wait for uh, the final two. And I was telling Jay over there, you all are a lot smarter than I was at that age. My goodness, right? I mean, seriously. You, you think uh, about when we were... Uh, that age in college or whatever it was back in time and uh, how far uh, we've come and uh, uh, we've got a bright future with students like this no no doubt about it all right let's move along uh, to team number eight so we welcome to the stage from Stark State College yeah Circuit Storm Aqua Blasters Gregory Mummert and friends so Gregory Again, the yellow means you've got one minute left. The red means your time is up, and the microphone is all yours. Good luck. Thank you very much.
Hello, sharks. That's better. My name is Gregory. I'm from Alliance, Ohio. And today I am presenting my company, Circuit Storm Hydroblasters. We make high powered water guns for the amusement parks and entertainment centers of Ohio and hopefully America. Now, I brought with me my, very, my company's very first product today, uh, the Badger. This is something I've worked on for over 10 years, designing and building, and I'm very proud to present it to you guys today. The Badger is a fully pneumatic, high-powered water gun that's able to shoot water bullets up to 25 feet, uh, has a capacity of 144 shots, and is made for industrial use. Now, now a demo. Of course, it doesn't go quite as planned. <laughs> when does it ever happen when you're doing a live demo? Of course. So, now, let's say you and a group of friends want to have fun for the day, and you want to go paintballing. What would happen is you and your friends would drive to the field, you'd rent the gun, all the safety gear, and you buy a couple thousand paintballs. You go out onto the field, and you play structure ward games with a ref for a couple of hours. You have a great time, and you go home. My company is very similar to this, but instead of paintballs, I'm using water guns. Now, my business is a B2B business, meaning that I'm not the person that's running the fields or doing the day-to-day -day operations. I'm the person that supplies the equipment. Now, I'm going to sell a package uh, that's going to include the water blaster, a refill station to refill the blaster, the field plans, and the obstacles. Now, sorry. Now, you might be wondering who I'm going to be selling to. I'm going to be selling to places like Cedar Point, Kings Island, or even campgrounds, places like that. Sorry, I had a bad start. Now, some numbers for you. Last year, 2.6 million people alone played paintball. And there's over 15,000 paintball places around the US. Now, you might be wondering why somebody would choose a company like mine over one of those other companies. And there are three main reasons, very important reasons. One is versatility. You can't put a paintball arena anywhere. Well, just anywhere. But you can put my water blasters just about anywhere. You can put them indoors, outdoors, big areas, small areas. Very, very versatile. And the second main reason is safety. Paintballs travel at over 200 miles an hour and weigh as much as two quarters do. When that hits you, that is going to hurt, no matter how much padding you have. People are literally getting their eyes shot out every year from paintball guns. So what my design does is it shoots water bullets, which there's nothing holding them together, which means as soon as they hit something, all that energy is immediately dispersed. So all you need to play my, with my guns is maybe some safety glasses, if that. The third reason is cost. Because I'm using water, it's much cheaper than paintballs. Right now, the going rate is 1,000 paintballs for about $50, and you will go through those in about two to three hours worth of play. But because mine's using water, it's much, much cheaper. And that water can be shot, collected, filtered, and reused over and over and over again. Now, what am I going to use the money for if I get it today? There are two very important reasons that I need it. One is for patents. That way I can protect my designs, and that way I can sell them to the bigger companies. And the second reason is for more prototypes. Currently, my design is electric pneumatic, and I would like it to be fully pneumatic. That way it's easier for industrial use. And I know that's 100% possible because both paintball guns and airsoft guns, both are fully pneumatic. Now, I feel like the world needs this. I've, I'm improving almost every part of play warfare. No longer do you have to pick up foam darts or risk getting injured from plastic BBs or heavy paintballs. Sorry. 
I've created, I've created a category that's thrilling enough for adults and teens, but still safe enough even for kids. Thank you. So I'm assuming that was supposed to be a, a yes, water droplet going, yes. going there. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you have any idea what went wrong? I think I do. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's good. Being the manufacturer, you should. Yeah. Know. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I just can't demonstrate it, of course. <laughs> so how much does it cost to make that gun? So currently, this design right here, I've been working on for over 10 years. So the total cost of prototyping and developing it has been over 2,000. But what you see right here is about $700. Uh, I'm sorry, about $400. And so when I go into manufacturing, most of those pieces will be designed in-house and simplified. That way I can get the price point down. Okay. So the model is, you know, uh, we, you can convert an area over that was paintball to water guns. They can buy their own water guns so you can go and rent them mm -hmm. there. Yep. Or it seems like, you know, I can go over to Dick's Sporting Goods. I can buy myself the super paintball blaster or that, that blaster on my own and take it with me as well. So you wouldn't, for this one, you need the refill stations to plug it into. So what you would do is, like on the field, it would be beside the field. So when, you're, when it's empty and you're done blasting your friends, you take it over to the refill station, you plug it in, and it instantly refills it with air and with water. Um, that way, you, there's no pumping whatsoever. Okay. So, so, so you have a unique attachment for your mm -hmm. gun that's making that process happen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is that... Um, I guess that's a good idea because everybody has to use your gun, and if you can be the first one to market, you know it's like the yeah. it's like the chargers for phones. Yeah, you know everybody you get a unique one, they change it all the time. Right. Correct. So, okay. Yeah. All right. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so you you did say that you were going to convert this over to a to all electric. All, all pneumatic. All pneumatic. Yes. Okay. All air powered. All air powered. Yes. And that's that that way we don't have to have batteries in it. Okay. And so less batteries, that's less danger even more, and it's easier for the companies to manage because there's no recharging, and you just have to fill it with air. Okay. So, what's, so it's, what's the compressed air pressure that you're putting into that? So currently I have it at 125 PSI in the tank, and that's just a little low for this. I think a 200 would be a, a more ideal pressure, but things like paintball guns and airsoft guns, they're more around uh, 1,000 to 2,000 PSI, okay. so I'm, I'm much lower. And the paint, the paintballs, mm -hmm. are they biodegradable? The set paint biodegradable? Yes, they yes, now. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they changed them over from heavy plastics to more biodegradable earth friendly materials. Do you know if you can get a patent on that? Have you done a preliminary search so, at all? So what I, I, I have searched and there's nothing like this because of the refill stations you have to plug it into because they're, they're, it's specifically designed to be refilled with the refill station. And because of that, I can use pressurized air, and there's no other water guns that use pressurized air. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very easily, I, I believe I can get a patent. So you just did this because you loved paintball before this, uh, or what, what, what got, I mean, one thing I like about um, entrepreneurs is it's always a reflection of something you're interested in or that you, you know, have a passion for. So 10 years into that, that's, that's a large part of your life. Yes, it is. Yes, and so what, my, one of my favorite things to do as a kid was to have water battles. During the summertime, it was my absolute favorite thing, and it still is. And, but the problem was is, is the water guns weren't all that great. So my friends and I would go out, and we'd have our little cheapy guns, and then they break, can't use them next year. They're not very powerful. You couldn't tell if you got shot or not. But, and so what I did is I went home, and I designed my own water gun, because I've always been really fascinated with pneumatics and hydraulics and all, all, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so I went home, I made a design, and that design is before you today. Yeah. Good job. No well, other, thank you. No other water gun we're aware of has this type of power, right? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. No. And I've, I've been looking for 10 years to find something uh, even similar. There's nothing. Okay. Yeah. How'd you come up with the name? Circuit Storm. Sounds cool, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I did. What I did is I, 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 uh, I went through like five, five, six names. I finally narrowed it down to. I've always been trying to come up with a name for it ever since I, since I uh, started it. And so I took those five, six names that I couldn't narrow it down to, and I asked everybody I knew what their favorite was, and that one won. So I like it. Everyone else likes it. I'm going to ask a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Have you talked to? Uh, like paintball parks sorry, or anything, anything like that. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. That's right. good. No, go ahead. Have you talked to people? Have you done a survey of paintball parks that said, hey, 
What if we converted this over to water instead of paint? So it would be, to clarify your point, it would be a little less uh, of a conversion. It would be more of an add-on, something for uh, if you don't want to get hurt or if you have kids that want to do something. Uh, but I have asked. I've gone to a couple of them. I brought the prototype. I said, would this be something that you'd be interested in? And at that point, the prototype wasn't quite as good, which you know, it's operating a lot like it is now. <laughs> but I've asked them, and they, they absolutely love the idea, because they have so many um, they have so many people that come, and they don't realize how much pain is involved and how much danger there is. And after one round, half the people are ready to go home. Like if you bring a large church group or a youth group or something like that, half of them are done by the first round because it's too painful, it's too, it's too risky. And so they're always looking. They, they've started uh, making gel blaster arenas to solve this problem. But uh, this is improving on that design as well. Okay. Thank oh, you very thanks. much. All right. Well, I'll let you take that down. And while uh, we wait to get that cleaned up, I was talking with uh, Jay Moody earlier, and he sent me this text from last year's winner of Stark Tank. And uh, I'll just read it to you uh, so you can see uh, how important uh, this event is. Uh, his name is Isaiah Kaiser, and he said, here's an update from uh, last year. I can't believe it's been a year since Stark Tank. Auxilium, is that the, the, the way you pronounce it? Has established many relationships with hospitals, contract research organizations, uh, thought leaders and regulatory and reimbursement experts. The funding from Stark Tank not only gave us more momentum, but was instrumental in our growth. It was used to complete testing, file more intellectual property, and refine our commercialization strategy, among other things. Auxilium was also recently awarded a $200,000 Ohio Technological Validation and Startup Phase Two grant and is working on closing a pre-seed round of funding to further accelerate commercialization. Stark Tank opened up many doors for our company. We have become deeply integrated within Stark County and very thankful for their ongoing support. We look forward to Stark County continuing to be an integral part of our success, and a lot of that had to do with Stark Tank. So to you, uh, Sharks, uh, for first of all, coming up with this idea, uh, and what are we, seven years somewhere in that vicinity, right? Uh, when, when it started and uh, getting results like that, it's pretty impressive. So that's why uh, this is such an important night. So we just wanted to pass that along to you uh, and show you that, yes, uh, this, this does move things forward. All right, we've got our final presentation uh, up here on the stage for Stark Tank 2024 from the University of Mount Union, uh, the company Signal. Jonah Botko and Braden Lazara. Come on up, gentlemen, and good luck. A reminder, yellow means you have a minute. Red means you're finished. Here's the microphone. Alrighty, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Brayden Lazara. And my name is Jonah Baco. And today we'll be presenting our medical software, Signal, improving patient-doctor relationships one click at a time. Now before we get into what Signal is, how did Signal start? Well, I tore my ACL not once, but twice. 
With this came hundreds of hours of physical therapy and doctor's appointments. My second ACL tear came halfway through my senior season of playing soccer, with dreams of playing collegiate soccer in jeopardy. Uh, so with this appointment as well, I had to go right after to a follow-up to just get a routine checkup. But that doctor that I always went to liked to crack jokes, liked to play games, like stuff like that, which after you tear your ACL is something you probably don't want to be hearing. So what if the doctor knew what you were feeling before going in to that appointment? That's where Signal can come in to help. So Signal focuses on um, mental health markers or like questions such as anxiety, mood, and uh, overall stress level as well. Uh, with this, it comes with a lot of ease of use. You have uh, just a login, as you can see here, and you just fill it out and submit, and all the information goes directly to the medical professional. Another good thing about Signal is that it's a software. We can adapt it to any medical practice or place that we want to go to. They can have different questions, and you can see here an example of a patient view in addition to a caregiver view that they can use in their field. So in order to find some validity on our problem, we did a research questionnaire. So we had over 100 patients answer this questionnaire, as well as 11 medical professionals, including many doctors. So an example of a question was for question one, has a doctor ever neglected your feelings? And we found over 27% of patients actually answered yes to that question. Uh, for question two, does your patient's feeling affect how you deliver your diagnosis besides uh, for bed and bedside manner? And 90% of medical professionals answered yes. But unfortunately, for question three, do you know how the patient is currently feeling when you first enter the room? Only 45% of medical prof professionals answered yes. And for this question, there was also a caveat. It says feeling, so technically they could also think about the diagnosis, so if they're actually physically in pain versus how they're actually mentally feeling. And so we're leaving between what they know and what they know is important there's a 55% of the doctors that answered left in that gap. And so Signal fills that gap. So for our target market, uh, we would like to focus on small private practices, uh, especially ones that are developed in a local market, but specifically near bigger hospitals. Uh, we know that independent practices range anywhere between eighteen dollars to $20,000 in IT devices, but specifically with our di differentiation, on top of ease of use for the patient to actually use it instead of just medical professionals, uh, the competitive edge is for smaller practices because it is a cost-effective way for patient retention. As well, a lot of hospitals, obviously, because of their general size, they can withhold a lot of patients. Unfortunately, small practices they need to have a cutting edge system like this that's cheap and reliable to have patients reoccur at their location. And so a financial breakdown. So with this, it's a $500 per unit cost. It includes $250 for two Raspberry Pi screens. This system of cost uses that we actually supply a monitor or screen for them to have outside of the door at the office. So say there's a room that a patient is being seen in, there would be a screen within, uh, right outside the door that a doctor can pretty much click on, click what patient name, and they can find the answers of that questionnaire and see how they're feeling before they actually walk in the room. And then on top of that, the $100 NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit, this actually is for programming the software, so to actually upload it to the monitors, and as well as a $150 installation fee. So. For the actual price point, we set it at $1,200 with a biannual subscription fee of $150 uh, per unit. So this is mainly to anytime we update the app or update the software, the annual fee, especially the biannual fee, it'll allow for us to still have uh, capital to use throughout the year despite just individual sales. As well as on the $1,200 price point, it is a 58% profit margin. As for our resources consulted, we had over 11 medical professionals uh, talk to us about the questions that we should use, how we can develop Signal to be better. In addition, we talked to an uh, attorney, uh, 
a patent attorney, in addition to a marketing chief marketing officer and financial advisor. Uh, the one person I'd like to highlight in particular is James Voos. Uh, he is the head physicians for the Cleveland Browns, in addition to the NFL uh, in general, the Physician Society, and he's the chair of University Hospitals, who said this would be something that he would love to see in his hospital and would really help him with his treatment as well. But thank you for listening, and do you have any questions for us? So you got, uh, it's like a, like a little conference room. Uh, it's been reserved screen on the outside of the door in the room. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Like a little HMI screen. Mm -hmm. And then as the patient, I'm either laying in bed or I'm sitting in a chair waiting on them to come in. Where, how do I inter where do I interact with it? It will be inside the room as well for inside the patient the to answer, then outside when the doctors come in can see okay. the responses. Okay. So you sit there and while you're waiting on a doctor to come in, mm -hmm. you're answering the little survey that's mm -hmm. describing how I'm Mm -hmm. So specifically with my experience when I tore my ACL, like my mom put her Superman cape on and called the doctor when I was younger. It was like, hey, like, yeah. just let you know he tore his ACL. You might want to change the mirror. And like that was honestly the best appointment I had with him ever. So I think that's kind of like a big thing just to show that real life example of like you don't know what a person's going through until gotcha. you kind of are with them and engaging with them. Yeah, yeah especially at uh, smaller practices, but even hospitals, we know that there's a shortage of workers, especially for how many patients they have. So this is a way to easily collect data on a patient mm -hmm. where we don't actually need someone in the room to you know, use their time. So if there's a nurse that's out on a rotation, it just gives them a little bit of a ease so they get to actually be able to have that one-on-one, -on -one, know how to treat a patient, but at the same time, they can handle rotation with multiple patients. Go ahead. I like the questions you asked, uh, those three questions, mm -hmm. because you, it sounds like you surveyed doctors, patients, there was one other one, but it, it kind of, I was having some doubt until I saw that. Mm -hmm. You asked the right question, so kudos there. Sounds like you've gotten some, a lot of good input on this, because as a, as a judge, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, are you sure they don't already do this? Mm -hmm. But you're saying they don't. Yeah, I actually and, personally went to like the Cleveland Clinic and interviewed people there, yeah. university hospitals, Agri Children's Hospital. Yeah. And a lot of them were like surprised and didn't even know this like could be a thing. Or, like, this could really help. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially like the way I like to think of. So my mom is a coordinator at a hair salon. You go to the barber or you go to the hair salon person because you have that relationship with them. Mm -hmm. You go to that doctor. If you have that trust and relationship, you have a more likelihood to go back to that same physician, go back and get to that same practice, just like the barber, just like anything. It's another service. So this could even help the hospitals retain patients even more. Mm -hmm. And a further on your question. Um, most of the times when they have softwares, it's to track criterions for diagnosis. So it'll be like symptoms. This isn't really tracking symptoms. This is tracking how the patient is actually feeling on a mental level. And so it's more of the bedside manner. Mm -hmm. And so it's mm -hmm. just, it's just mm -hmm. a different form of data yeah, that yeah. unfortunately is important for retention, but they don't really track it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Does this integrate with any other common medical software like MyChart or anything like that, or is it completely independent? So, at least for our programmer, he's having it independent. Um, obviously, moving forward, because there's so many conglomerates that do have software already in the space, uh, we were kind of open to talking to them if they were interested in you know, either buying it or mm -hmm. actually partnering with us. Smart. Just because there That's is- smart. It's a, it's a gap in the market that, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're surprised actually is yeah. there, but mm -hmm. we're, you know, we'd love to capitalize on it. Because so you've done your homework. Yeah. Yeah. I understand yeah. that, that your proprietary information is not necessarily the programming of the Raspberry Pi and the HMI. It's the questions that you're going to ask, uh -huh. and that's what you've got to get locked up with mm -hmm. as intellectual property. Because if you're going to joint venture or, or sell that intellectual property, to my chart or mm -hmm. home health or whatever, you don't want them just to take see your questions one time and then all of a sudden they've got mm -hmm. it on the app. Yeah, when we did our research, um, uh, software as a medical device, unfortunately, unless the software is used for actually symptoms for a diagnosis or tracking criteria for a, di a diagnosis, you can't patent the actual system for it. Typically, it's very hard. Uh, it's very rare if it actually does get past, so that's why that comes in the 
a greater importance mm -hmm. on how we actually write the questions. Yeah. That's also like the feedback we got from the mm -hmm. patent attorney, yeah. kind of uh, the difficulty of doing that with software. this type of device. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'd like to add too, I'll be meeting with us when it's on the board of Firelands Hospital in May to talk about that and like if we could do like a test trial there as well. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. did, I, did I miss it? What are you going to do if you guys win with the money? Yeah. We we are both uh, not financially well, you know, eating ramen college students. So we want to be able to grow this product and make it uh, help people, just like yeah. our experiences. Because yeah. he didn't mention himself, but he just tore his ACL too. Yeah. So <laughs> we're trying to uh, we're trying to just build this product to be able to help people like ourselves, like going through these experiences yeah. and get it out there. Because uh, we would like to improve our software, be able to program better. Like we just are using the stuff that we have amount for free. Like if we had a better technology, we could probably even make it cheaper. And going off that, honestly, the capital is just, you know, such an important part because of who we are and that, you know, we do pay for our own college. We work very hard, but honestly, knowing you guys, I mean, that there are, I mean, marketing company, you guys consult with businesses and I'm assuming you've worked with software engineers. So oh, yeah. that's <laughs> your connections really are important to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there you have it, all nine teams. Uh, we started with uh, Vinci Learning, Battery Drop, Performix, Societal Heights Marketing Agency, Spicky, Rays of Sunshine Company, Honk, uh, Circuit Storm, Aqua Blasters, and Signal. How about a great round of applause for all of our students, their businesses. And now it's time for the judges to head on out and deliberate and decides, uh, decide, excuse me, which of these awesome businesses they'd like to uh, make monetary investments in. Some really tough choices for them to make here tonight. So uh, best of luck to the judges as uh, uh, they get together and decide this uh, for Start Tank 2024. All right, while we're getting situated and before the announcements, a quick shout out to Keith Brown and the Perry High School video production team for live streaming all of those Stark Tanks all season long, all year long. So thank you. We appreciate your work. Also, thanks to our partners, Stark Educational Partnership, our college teams, great presentations tonight, our Sharks, Sue Grabowski, Mark Fedor, Charles Mullen, Stark State College, and Strengthening Stark and jun Junior Achievement. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of what everybody is contributing to an event like this. All right, Sharks, I'm going to turn it over to you. It's all yours, uh, and uh, I know it was a tough choice, so uh, let's hear the winners. All right, thank you, Kenny. Nice job today, too, for yourself. Let's give Kenny a round of applause. So you guys made it really tough. I mean, you guys all did a great job. And uh, you may have heard me say this before, especially the ones that were in high school that have come up through. Um, you know, just because you didn't win or get picked, entrepreneurs, it's a definite maybe. That means I'm close. You get to keep working on failure is just, at, a, at an event like this, is just the next step. You always learn from that. And all of you in this room, every presentation made it very difficult. You've all done a wonderful job, and we all just give everybody a round of applause. The thing that was interesting is you all have that energy, right? You all have the energy to be successful, and we see it. You know, we're I'm back there like, wow, well, I want to hire that person. Let's try to bring that person on staff. You know, so you all have it, you know. And that's, you got that it factor, so keep going. You know, this is just one competition. It's one thing in life. Don't get disappointed. It's be, take the positive, and if you want to come up afterwards and ask us, hey, what could I have done better? Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you, all right? So I get the pleasure of presenting third place, okay? So if you remember last year, we gave all of it to one, so they were good and really good this year, so we got three places, okay? So I get the pleasure of handing a check for $4,000 to Performex. So, Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a little bit a little bit of advice. Okay, well let's come up and get the picture and then I'll well I guess I'll talk about it again. I'll hand you the check. Come on up on stage. 
So, so you guys are bringing, a, you're bringing another competitor to the market. And know that NCSA has a free option, okay? They have a free option that you, you could have picked. And I think the, the, big, the big thing is with, with, with NCSA is they're, they're trying to hook you into that massive paid thing that you, that you experienced, right? And that, that to the international you know, athletes that don't really understand what's happening here in America or how the whole process works, you, you have an opportunity there to really change the world, you know, of everything that's coming in to bring a nice, nice, uh, uh, um, open, uh, clean and, and inexpensive market to it. So I think you got something there. And I like, I like fueling dreams better. Just so I want to say, page. but hey, you're, hey, it's your business, man. You got, you got to do what you got to do. I just want to tell you. So nice job. Let me be a handshake here. So nice job. All right, nice job. Thank you so much. Yep, yep. And the other guy that was on, tell him, tell him a good job. So. so I get to give second place, but um, just, again, just encouragement that um, all of us up here have uh, failed, succeeded, failed, succeeded, and that's the life of the entrepreneur, and that's what makes it freaking wonderful. Don't forget that the good things come from hard things. So when you say, like, it's, it's going to be hard, any of your ideas that you have here, if you want to go make them happen, it's going to be hard. But good things come from hard. So, um, so keep going. So uh, second place um, is an $8,000 check to Spicky. <laughs> so... What we liked um, is the concept of it, and we can see the direct need for it in a lot of different applications. Congratulations. We'll take our picture, and then I'll finish telling you. So we see direct opportunities for it. We are very impressed that you applied for the patent. We hope that you will see that through. And then once that goes through, you are off to talk to designers. And the cool thing about Northeast Ohio is there are actually people right here in this region that could help you realize this vision. Um, there are lots of manufacturers, lots of engineering firms, medical firms. Um, Mark mentioned from Gojo to, um, to the technology that's, that's pushing water through some of the, the casts and things that they're doing in medicine. So we encourage you to, to pursue it and we want you to stay in touch with us and let us know where you take this idea. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, this was so hard tonight. I, you guys are all winners because, I mean, you're one of, you know, you're the 1% that stays up late at night thinking about this stuff while everybody else is watching TV, going to bed. So I, I hate the fact that we can't give you all a check. I really do because I'm just so impressed with everybody. You got, you got, got dressed up. You're here on a Wednesday night. You could be off goofing around like the rest of us all want to be out goofing around right now. You're here pitching a product to improve the world. I'm just proud of every one of you. So uh, this is hard. This is hard to, to come up with three winners when you're all winners. But I guess I got the easy one because I get to give first place. So again, I wish I could give first place to everybody, but uh, on, let's do it. Come on up. <laughs> It wasn't just the tux that sold this, Honk. It was uh, the good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Absolutely. Congratulations. There you go. Yep, hold, open that up. So, so Honk, uh, what, what's your name again? Garrett. <laughs> Garrett. Okay, I'm going to know you as Honk, but Honk, Sorry. Garrett, <laughs> uh, go get that patent, Absolutely. right? But uh, you've come a long way with this. You've done your homework. Uh, you were able to show the judges beyond disputable doubt that this thing has a market. Uh, could have a fairly unlimited market, especially in the, the lower end cars. It's, but it could, it could be all cars, but especially in lower end cars. So you convinced us that this is something that we could invest money in and probably see a return fairly 
quickly. Got to get that patent, though. So let's talk, okay? Yes, sir. All right, congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, judges. Well done. Congratulations to everyone who presented here tonight uh, and keep working on your project uh, that you have. And uh, there's always uh, uh, a next year. And who knows, maybe we'll see some of you back here next year. Judges, I know it was a tough choice. I was talking with Jay. It's like there are nine good presentations, nine great ideas. And again, uh, we're in good hands with the, the future of kids like this uh, and college students like this. So uh, congratulations to everybody here tonight. Uh, thank you to uh, everybody involved with Stark Tank. And uh, maybe we'll see some of you back here next year. And uh, have a great evening. And again, congratulations to everybody.